Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Memories of South Vietnam. I'm your host, Gary D. Harrington. Tonight, we're going to be going into the subject of how do you remember it? How do you remember the war? We're going to start off by talking to some of our veterans about it. This is Bob. Thank you. The uniforms, the really green uniforms. Uh, whereas if you've been there a while and your uniform been washed a lot of times, it was really faded out. And you could tell those are the guys that really had time and grade in and were on their way home soon. I know. We aged fast within that one short year, which seemed like a lifetime. But do you remember the first night? The first night that you arrived in your unit? Uh, let's go to Jim over here. Jim? The funniest thing that happened to me was the first night I was in on K, I had just come up from Cameron Bay and was assigned to the 7th the 15th. I uh, got in bed that first night and it was hot and I was scared and I was sitting, laying there trying to sleep thinking I had 364 more days of this stuff and about that time Charlie Battery started shooting and I didn't know what was going on. Griff, you were telling me the story about uh, how you and John Carvey took the flight and uh, how you almost all went down. Can you, can you tell the crowd that? Thank you. John Cosby delivered some court martial papers and on our way back, the uh, airplane we were flying, I believe it was a C-123, something like that. It's one of those plane, camouflage planes that you set on the sides and we were coming in for landing and the pilot had lost the airplane. We were coming in almost at probably about a 45 degree angle and and I was literally scared to death and I was leaning up against John Cosby <laughs> and I was terrified. I thought we were going to die and, and uh, I looked down at Cosby and he looked up, up at me and he said, nice knowing you, Grill. <laughs> I did not I did not answer him. I couldn't open my mouth. The pilot did jerk the plane up. We bounced heat. about 10 feet. That's one of the things we had to deal with every day. Tom's going to be telling us a little bit about the heat and how he remembers that. Tom, go ahead and tell us. Thank you. I do recall that uh, when I was in Vietnam, I did have to come home from uh, uh, my mother at the time was ill. She had terminal cancer, and I came home in the middle of July. And it was so hot in Vietnam when I left, uh, 110, 120 at times. I think the hottest ever got was 126 that I recall, and that was like in May of 69. Anyway, I came home in emergency leave in June of 69, and... Uh, Flew into Cleveland, Ohio, and back that's uh, where I was from, and uh, it was like 80 degrees, and I froze. It just, I felt like I was freezing to death, and it was in July, and here I am walking around with a coat on, my wife, and everybody thought I was crazy, but uh, the heat was just so unbearable. I was used to the heat so much in Vietnam, and to come back to 80 degrees in Cleveland with zero or very low humidity, it's just, uh, to me, it was very, very cold, and... Uh, Thanks, Tom. Dal Chico is going to tell us a little bit about how he went out on a cleanup operation, and um, it all turned out to be pretty rough out there. Chico, go ahead and tell us a little bit about it. Um, I I didn't have a story till um, we were watching some slides, and we were uh, it was about picking up some junk over at a fire base that had been abandoned. Okay, we had been picking up stuff out of there all day long. And uh, there was an asphalt road that went up to it. I believe it was LZ Crystal when the 
when that battery had moved down and abandoned all their stuff. And me and Sergeant Tate were picking up stuff all day long. And anyway, it was getting kind of late, and we were going to make one more last run. When we got there, there was nobody there anymore. Everybody had gone, and the road was gone also. The Vietnamese had picked up the asphalt from the, literally picked up the asphalt from the road and took off with it. And so, uh, but Sergeant Tate, he, uh, he said, let's get some more stuff out. Well, I was a little scary. Like I said, I said man, let's get the heck out of here. And because uh, we were the only ones around there, the place was dead. There wasn't very much left. Like I said, the road was gone also. So uh, we threw some stuff on there and got the heck out of there. That was Thanks, Chico. Now we're going to go to Captain Hunter. We're going to talk about the uh, 250,000 round for the battalion. The battalion had 12 guns. So uh, we were firing a lot of rounds from 1966 to 1969, I believe. Um, the, Captain, can you give us some idea of the 250,000 round for the battalion? Round for the battalion. And we kept track, and at the proper time, and I believe we came up to fire that round, and they had him pull it. And we took the uh, round, set it aside, and it was a ceremony plan. And, and it was decided it would be held at Bravo Battery. And the round was painted up, 250 pound rounds, and numerous other slogans, nice and not so nice, were on the round. And the, it was prepared that came the day of the ceremony. He had group commander, uh, Colonel Keefe and, and the battalion commander, uh, Colonel Morton Ark. And we had the ceremony out by the uh, the gun that was going to fire. And then went down to launch at Bravo Battery. During the time uh, the we were at lunch, a couple of Bravo Battery people snuck in, took the supplemental charge out of the round, and when we came back to fire, the the, the round got the whole long lanyard, got a lot of people on the lanyard, pulled the lanyard, 8-inch fire. The, it was fired at the New Mule Mountains. Everybody looked. Nothing happened. Colonel Hart at one point pointed and said, isn't that dust over there? Colonel Keefe he said, no, it was a dud, and, and walked off, and uh, and that was the story of the 250,000th round that the battalion fired. You have been watching Memories of South Vietnam. I am your host, Gary D. Harrington. Thank you.